The following program is produced by the Living Church of God. For hundreds of years, various prognosticators have been predicting the end of the world. Now, scientists warn us that global warming, El Nino and La Nina, will endanger life on planet Earth. Will earthquakes, volcanoes, and record weather disturbances threaten our very existence? What does the Bible say about the future of planet Earth? Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World The Living Church of God presents Dr. Roderick C. Meredith Richard Ames Bringing you the good news of your future in tomorrow's world. This week, Richard Ames examines Earth in turmoil. And now, Richard Ames. Warm greetings to you all. 1999 set a world record for weather-related financial damage. And according to Munich Ray's Geoscience Research Group in Germany, the year 2000 set a new record in the number of natural catastrophes. This research group, quote, registered more than 850 catastrophes throughout the world, 100 more than in the previous record year of 1999, and 200 more than the average in the 1990s. As chance would have it, the effects of these events in both terms of economic and insured losses and the number of fatalities remained within bounds. Although major catastrophes were generally lacking in 2000, this, in Munich Ray's opinion, means nothing more than a breathing space. End of quote. The prospect for more devastating natural disasters is strong. Munich Ray's report concluded, quote, The losses generated by natural catastrophes must be expected to continue increasing in the future. In the wake of evident climate change, more frequent and more severe weather extremes are to be expected in the future, end of quote. Every year we seem to hear of extremes and floods, droughts, temperatures, and severe storms. Some critics say we don't need to worry why the world has been around for billions of years and has withstood whatever nature has thrown at her. There's one little problem with that statement. Even if the physical earth were to survive... Will plant, animal, and human life survive the onslaught of weather disasters and mankind's own pollution of the planet? In recent years, planet Earth has experienced powerful earthquakes, erupting volcanoes, record floods, record temperatures and droughts, destructive forest fires, devastating hurricanes, typhoons, and tornadoes. Will they intensify over the next few years? In 1997, Devastating floods damaged communities in Ohio, Kentucky, Arkansas, and neighboring states. The New York Times reported, quote, People who survived Saturday's pounding winds called it the most violent day of weather in memory. The storm front sent floods, tornadoes, and spring-like thunderstorms through eight states as far south as Mississippi and Tennessee and as far north as Ohio. But no state suffered worse than Arkansas. Governor Mike Huckabee stated, quote, We had more tornadoes and more damage than in all of last year. I'm calling it apocalyptic, end of quote. Governor Huckabee called this weather disaster apocalyptic. The word apocalyptic comes from the book of Revelation or the book of the apocalypse. The word apocalyptic has come to mean, quote, predicting or presaging imminent disaster and total or universal destruction. Will we soon experience universal destruction? Will the end of the world actually occur? And will it happen in your lifetime? Does God actually cause all these extremes in the weather? What does the Bible say? If you have your Bible available, turn to what is called the Olivet Prophecy in Matthew 24. The disciples of Jesus ask him a very serious question that concerns our future. Matthew 24 and verse 3. Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? The authorized King James Version of 1611 phrases the question as the end of the world. But the Greek word is aeon, meaning age or era. 
there's a new age coming. We call it tomorrow's world. That age will begin with the return of Jesus Christ to this earth. Yes, the kingdom of God will rule on this earth for a thousand years, as it tells us in Revelation 20, verse 4, and verse 6. My friends, the good news is, planet earth will not end, but the age of mankind's disastrous rulership and failed stewardship will end. What events and trends did Jesus predict near the end of this age? Let's turn to Matthew 24 and verse 7. Jesus warned of false religions, regional wars, and world wars. Then he stated in Matthew 24, verse 7, And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. As we've explained on previous programs, Jesus here is actually interpreting the symbolic horsemen of the apocalypse revealed in Revelation, the sixth chapter. The pale horse represents devastating famine. In the last century, we saw severe famines in Africa, particularly in Sudan, also in China, the Ukraine, and during the siege of Leningrad in World War II. Listen to this quote from the book, The 900 Days, The Siege of Leningrad. Husbands ate their wives, wives ate their husbands, and parents ate their children. The Creator God warns us in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 54 through 57, that this kind of cannibalism will afflict those who reject His way of life. Read the whole chapters of Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26. They're called the blessings and cursings chapters. Sadly, many will not believe Christ's warnings of famine for the end time. But many of them will learn firsthand the truth of that warning. Jesus also warned that end-time earthquakes would precede His second coming. He said in Matthew 24, verse 7, that there will be earthquakes in various places. There isn't time on this program to list all the powerful earthquakes that have taken place in the 20th century. But let's take a sample of them. September 1st, 1920, a magnitude 8.3 earthquake killed 140,000 and destroyed one-third of Tokyo and most of Yokohama. May 22, 1927, a magnitude 8.3 earthquake killed about 200,000 near Jining, China. May 30, 1935, an earthquake in Quetta, Pakistan killed between 30,000 and 60,000. May 31, 1970, an earthquake killed 50,000 in Peru. 17,000 more were missing. February 4, 1976, an earthquake in Guatemala killed over 23,000. July 28, 1976, China's worst earthquake in the 20th century killed 242,000 confirmed dead in Tangshan. September 16, 1978, an earthquake killed 25,000 and destroyed the city of Tabas, Iran. December 7, 1988, a magnitude 6.9 earthquake in Armenia killed nearly 25,000, injured 15,000, and left 400,000 homeless. October 17, 1989, a magnitude 7.1 earthquake killed 67 and injured over 3,000 in the San Francisco Bay Area of California. June 21, 1990, a magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake killed 50,000, injured 60,000, and left 400,000 homeless in northwestern Iran. January 17, 1994, a magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake killed 61 and injured over 8,000 in the San Fernando Valley of California. My wife and I were living in Pasadena, California at the time of the San Fernando Valley earthquake. Our old rented house seemed to be jumping up and down, and we were being tossed in our bed at 4.30 in the morning. It was frightening. Our legs became like rubber, and much of our strength was gone. We began to understand the awesome power for upheaval in the earth. And we began to realize by experience the power God has over the earth and the universe. As we'll see later, Bible prophecy predicts even greater earthquakes and devastation to come. Can you know what will happen to planet Earth, or who or what is controlling the dramatic changes in the Earth's climate, the weather patterns, and geological activity? At this time, I'd like to offer you our exciting, informative booklet, Who Controls the Weather? Just let me read to you the introduction. 
Are natural disasters the impersonal workings of Mother Nature, or can they be a vital message from God? Weather calamities are sometimes called acts of God. But what is his actual role in the droughts, famines, floods, and earthquakes that affect our world? What does the Bible say about weather disasters at the end of the age? What can a Christian do to prepare? This booklet, Who Controls the Weather, answers those questions. It's free of charge, so pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of Who Controls the Weather. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. Full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. No cost, no obligation to you. Call today. We saw in the first part of our program that the earth has experienced severe famines and earthquakes. We also saw that Jesus of Nazareth gave the signs for the end of this age. We need to be alert, on guard to world conditions as biblical prophecy marches forward in its fulfillment. Will there be more severe earthquakes in the future? The book of Revelation mentions several earthquakes after two and one half years of the great tribulation spoken of by Jesus in the Olivet Prophecy. The sixth seal of Revelation introduces the day of the Lord. I hope you've been able to study our audio tapes and articles on the subject. Turn in your Bible to Revelation 6 and verse 12. Here is described the sixth seal or the heavenly signs. Notice what happens. Revelation 6 and verse 12. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. This particular earthquake, along with intense astronomical activity, introduces the day of the Lord, the year preceding the second coming of Jesus Christ to this earth. Now let's continue in verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth, as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up. And every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who is able to stand? The earth will be in turmoil. There'll be a great earthquake, and every mountain and island will be moved out of its place. This is the time of God's judgment on the nations. It's called the day of the Lord. And here in Revelation 6, verse 17, it's called the great day of his wrath. Yes, Jesus Christ will be wrathful, and he'll judge the nations as many prophecies reveal. You can read the book of Joel and the 14th chapter of Zechariah for more information on the subject. Notice that even a greater earthquake takes place, mentioned later in the book of Revelation. Turn to Revelation, the 16th chapter. Here the kings of the earth gather to fight against Christ at his coming. They gather at the hill of Megiddo, called Armageddon, here in verse 16. Notice what happens. Revelation 16 and verse 17. God pours out symbolically the last of seven plagues in judgment. Revelation 16, verse 17. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as has not occurred since men were on the earth. Notice Revelation 16 and verse 21. After the great earthquake mentioned previously, after islands and mountains convulse, what happens? Revelation 16 and verse 21. 
And great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. How amazing! These men will not repent even after receiving God's punishment and correction. God wants all of us to repent from our sinful ways and embrace His way of life. We've discussed that way many times on this program. It is the way of the Bible. As Jesus said in Luke 4.4, 4, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Tomorrow's World Magazine, the free booklet we're offering on the program today, Who Controls the Weather? And our free Bible study course will help you learn the true way of life taught by Jesus Christ and your Bible. Our Father in Heaven wants the best for each of us. He's giving carnal humanity a lifetime to learn. If we heed God's warnings, we can escape the most horrendous judgments yet to occur on our Western nations and eventually the whole world. Not only will God get our attention through earthquakes, He'll also get our attention in some areas of the earth through tornadoes, hurricanes, and tropical storms. According to CNN News, July 19, 2001, monster hurricanes could hit the United States. Hurricane meteorologist Chris Lancey states, quote, A hurricane causing $50 billion in damage and hundreds to thousands of deaths is quite possible in the next 10 to 20 years. I think at this point, the United States is so developed and there's so many people along the coast that just about anywhere is a major disaster ready to happen, end of quote. Another meteorologist, Stanley Goldenberg, points out that from Florida to New England, along the East Coast, is at increased risk. He states, quote, With the increased number, if it starts pounding the U.S., as we feel like it is going to happen, there's bound to be a major city impacted, and we could be talking about a real disaster of epic proportions on our hands, end of quote. Do we acknowledge the Creator God in our individual and national lives? The Bible clearly reveals that God can give nations climatological blessings on the one hand or weather disasters on the other. Turn to Leviticus, the 26th chapter, and verse 3. The eternal God states, If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them, then I will give you rain in its season. The land shall yield its produce, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. On the other hand, God will bring punishments on disobedient peoples. Verse 18. And after all this, if you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. I will break the pride of your power. I will make your heavens like iron, and your earth like bronze, and your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield its produce, nor shall the trees of the land yield their fruit. Can you imagine the United States and Canada experiencing a record severe drought? In the summer of 2001, an ongoing Canadian drought sparked hundreds of wildfires and proved disastrous to crops. David Phillips, a senior climatologist with Environment Canada, stated, quote, I can't recall a year when we had such an extensive drought across the country, end of quote. These trends and warnings remind one of ancient King Ahab of Israel. God used the prophet Elijah to warn him and the nation of their idolatry and wickedness. In fact, God caused a total drought for over three years. Notice this in 1 Kings 17 and verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the eternal God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Elijah told King Ahab in 1 Kings 18, in verse 18, You have forsaken the commandments of the Eternal and have followed Baals, that is, the false gods and idols. The Apostle James also comments on this drought and punishment. James 5, in verse 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Will God punish our Western nations in the same way? Nationally and individually, 
we have also forsaken the commandments of the Lord. Ultimately, God will send two witnesses who will also have the power to cause drought. Turn in your Bible to Revelation 11 and verse 3. God says, And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. Now, notice verse 5. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. Just as the prophet Elijah called down fire from heaven, so will the two witnesses have that power. Verse 6. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. For three and one half years preceding the return of Jesus Christ, the two witnesses will have power to intervene in the weather. You need to be prepared for the future. Will God give you protection from the weather disasters that lie on the horizon? We'll discuss that in the conclusion of our program. But first, to help you in your study of the Bible, I'd like to offer you our informative free booklet, Who Controls the Weather? Here are some of the headings. American Weather Disasters. Something Unusual in the Weather? Earthquakes and Volcanic Eruptions. God's End Time Intervention. And a Future Garden of Eden. This booklet will help you to understand the dramatic changes in global weather patterns. What does the Bible say about weather disasters at the end of the age? And what can you do to prepare? This booklet, Who Controls the Weather, answers those questions. It's free of charge, so pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of Who Controls the Weather. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. Full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issue. No cost, no obligation to you. Call today. We've seen that the Creator God uses weather to bless or to punish nations. But mankind himself causes environmental problems. God gave human beings a responsibility to manage Earth's resources. In Genesis 1 and verse 26, God said... Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God also gave human beings mineral resources to create, design, and manufacture goods for the welfare of humanity. He told ancient Israel that he would bless them if they kept his commandments. Notice the blessings of mineral resources in Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, and verse 9. God said he would bring them into, quote, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper. Have we been faithful in balancing industrial production and environmental responsibility? Or have we polluted our air, water, and land because of greed? When God announces the return of Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation, he gives this judgment. Revelation 11 and verse 18. The nations were angry, and your wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Those who are destroying the earth will be held accountable. In spite of the prophesied weather disasters, climate changes, and divine judgments, God promises protection to his faithful servants. Turn to the psalm of protection. That's in Psalm 91. Here's a very encouraging message to those who turn to God and trust him. Psalm 91 and verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High 
shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Eternal, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor by the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. The world has many lessons to learn. All nations have been living the way of selfishness, greed, and lawlessness. God in His love will punish the nations, particularly the Western Christian professing nations, to wake them up. Yes, there is hope for the future. The Bible prophesies that many will take the correction and turn to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The land will be restored, healed, and renewed. Listen to this wonderful prophecy in Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, starting with verse 35. The land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden, and the wasted, desolate, and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. Then the nations which are left all around you shall know that I, the Eternal, have rebuilt the ruined places and planted what was desolate. I, the Eternal, have spoken it, and I will do it. Our stewardship of planet Earth will, to a great degree, determine our future. You can learn more about this future and the prophecies concerning dramatic climate changes ahead in our free booklet, Who Controls the Weather? This booklet will open your eyes to understanding the significant trends and changes that will affect your future and the future of the world. As Psalm 46 encourages us, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. May God bless you with His love, His protection, and His faith. Be sure to join us every week on Tomorrow's World. Dr. Meredith and I will continue to share with you the prophecies of the Bible and the exciting biblical answers to the most challenging questions of life. We look forward to your joining us again next week, right here at the same time. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free if you call this toll-free number 1-800-934-5579 or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. We invite you to visit our webpage at tomorrowsworld.org. Produced by the Living Church of God.